All right, on this episode of Bouks Talking Bouts, excited to be talking with an individual set to compete at BKB 32, and that goes down on May the 21st. We got the British title on the line as Scott McHugh enters the ring against Aaron McCollum, and happy to have Aaron on the show. How's it going there, Aaron? Yeah, it's right. I've done a nice bit of to you, mate. Feel on it. Yeah, it seems like the training camp's been going well, too. Like, I saw you were, you know, starting off the day with five rounds, and you know, two minutes sprint up, jog down, and everything like that. It seems like you're really, you know, pushing to, you know, sustain a pace through all of the rounds. Is this preparation at all different for you, being that it's a title fight and everything? Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of different. Um, I've put everything into this one. Um, I've left no stones unturned whatsoever. Like, if you see all my previous fights, I've got better and better as fight as fights have come on. But this one, I'm definitely bringing so much special. And yeah, the whole fitness to it, everything about it, I've just done absolutely everything I can. So yeah, no excuses at all. Yeah, I mean, that comes across from even the cursory look at it that I've seen on social media. And I guess I'm kind of curious, like, when the bout offer initially came your way. Like, I imagine you were, you know, ecstatic when it was presented to you. But, like, when were you, I guess, made privy to the fact you'd be contending for a title in this one? Well, after me last fight, I'd, um, I left it a couple of weeks and I messaged Jim. And I, I just put, what's, this, what's the chance of this underdog getting the title shot? Like, um, still didn't really expect one so so quick. But, yeah, when he, he offered me Scott McHugh, I was just absolutely buzzing with it. Like, literally, I just, I just got up out of bed the next day early, ready to start training and getting on it. Yeah, I was proper buzzing from it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, understandable, man. Definitely a big opportunity and definitely want to talk about that fight. But I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on the last one, just as you kind of briefly did that win at, you know, BKB 29, getting the win over John Collier and everything in December. And it seemed like a good performance in as far as, like, it was one that went the full distance. I mean, the prior two victories being first-round finishes is obviously great in its own regard, but what was it like to get that first bare-knuckle win going the full distance, and I guess thoughts on some of the general takeaways from that fight. Yeah, it was great. Um, I had, I knew, like, I had to put something different into fighting, John, you see, um, with his experience in the boxing. Um, I think he had over, over 20 years experience, over 100 fights and whatnot. So I had to bring something different. And um, I, I just trained, and someone just come out of me, I, I just... Like a boxer came out in there, not just this this old swinger and aggressive fighter all the time. So, yeah, it did a lot for for me. Um, it, it was quite strange because fighting him, I still didn't expect it to go. I, it, I, without sounding like too much of a dickhead about it, it was not, it was nice and easy for me. I felt at ease in the ring. Most probably one of the easiest fights I've had. Like. I was just com- composed with it all, and I can remember my cornerman saying in round two, like, take him out now. And I, th- I actually said back to my Curtis, uh, to Curtis, my trainer, I said, I don't want to. I said, I want to enjoy this third round and just box him a little bit more. Like, so I, the, the old fight, I literally just outboxed him, and I was buzzing with my performance. It was, it was just a massive achievement for me, that alone, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome to hear, and that comfortability and everything seemed to reflect in the fight. Do you think that was more of a testament to, I guess, the preparation you put into it and some of, like, the newer measures you added in the last camp? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'd actually, for that fight, I'd actually sparred people. I'd not really sparred up until that fight, you see, so I was just just training on the fitness and stuff like that (laughs) and on uh, pads and whatnot. But for John Collier, I had a lot of sparring. I was I was sparring like at least once a week and whatnot. So um, I got used to to like getting in and getting out and not just not just rushing all the time and using all your stamina and stuff. So yeah, I'd, I'd learned a lot from my sparring, just just taking it easy and and just and just playing them with a jab and stuff like like a boxer should, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and from even what I'm able to see, it seems like you're getting in a lot of great work in that regard, like guys like Martin Rafael and, you know, Jamie Barker, and just even, like, some of the work, like, alongside, like, even outside the sparring context, but also saw you were working with 
you know, Jimmy Sweeney, who's obviously got a massive profile in bare knuckle boxing. Can you speak to, you know, some of the people you've been working with that helped you in that, you know, path that you were just alluding to there? Yeah, I've, I've been uh, a with Martin Rafael. I've been uh, sparring with him quite a lot just lately. Me and him have got quite got quite good pals. Um, and obviously with him, with him fighting Scott and just, just really losing, I think he, he, did a, he did a really well against Scott uh, on a two-week camp. Um, so obviously Martin's come in and helped me with the sparring on to this fight and whatnot. Um, and yeah, and also I've also like my trainer Curtis. He was Midlands champion, one of the best boxers to come out of Nottingham. And I do a lot of sparring with him, and he, he's one of them type of guys. Like if you do well with him in the ring, you're not really going to go short in in the ring with other people. Do you know what, I'm, you know what I mean? Like he's that he's that good of a boxer. He'll he'll push you and push you, and he'll hit you in places that you never even knew you could get it. So you have to be fast and make sure you're always on your game with him, which is a massive help when it comes to fighting in the bare knuckle. Yeah, for sure. And then kind of touching on Nottingham there, I love that you're really representing Nottingham as the only you know bare knuckle boxer from that area. Can you speak to you know how much pride that gives you? Just really representing in BKB and everything. It seems like you, yeah. It, it's quite, it, it's still unbelievable to be fair. Like I, just just today, in, for instance, I've been training up um, kids in the schools um, with, with Curtis. I do, I help him a lot. Um, so I've got an old, I, I don't know what you call it over, over the pond there, but we, we call them year six. So it's like the last year of their junior school. Um, so we're training all of them and, just having them on your side and stuff like that and them knowing that what you're doing and stuff, it, yeah, it's, it, it's just so overwhelming. It's unbelievable, mate. Well, that's awesome. I imagine you get a lot out of, you know, you know, setting that example. Like, obviously, you're imparting, like, aspects of the craft and stuff like that. But I would think that, I guess, being that influence and being looked up to in that way would really, I guess, give you a lot of pride and whatnot. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, from the past... From my past um, and stuff like that, I've not really had this much um, support or anything ever in my life. So, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable, mate. It's, it's like a dream come true, really. Yeah, and I mean, you talk about everything, and it seems like you've had just an amazing turnaround in your life, like where you're at now, just, you know, like I said, in like a role model capacity and readying to contend for a title but I was seeing a previous interview where you were talking about how you were in a rough point with like drugs and alcohol and just kind of hanging with the wrong crowd but it seemed like athletics and then also your faith really helped lift you up overall can you kind of talk about that confluence of I guess faith and fighting in as far as how it turned your life around yeah it's easy. I mean like all, all my past when I've done bodybuilding and I've done glove boxing and stuff like that with the wrong crowd I could never really snap out of it I just I don't know, it was, it was strange, it was something that was always there, drinking, and like say, taking drugs and stuff like that. But with this, yeah, it's, it's just changed me completely. Like, Jim and Joe have just done a massive, massive thing for me. It's, it's like I owe them, I owe them these fights as much as they're giving them me. Like, I can't thank them enough, do you know what I mean? It's, it, yeah, it's just a buzz. I don't, it's hard to explain, like, I've just got that much support and I just feel feel wanted for people and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's really hard, mate, hard to explain it. But the best way to say it is just I'm very happy. Like, I've never been so happy in my life and and what I'm putting on the line, it, it, yeah, it's crazy, craziness, man. Yo, I love hearing stories like that, man. It's awesome that you're in a, you know, much better way, but you talked about, like, the bodybuilding scene and being part of that kind of earlier on and in one of the interviews I was listening to of yours that I was kind of referencing before like it kind of indicated that you're not necessarily someone who I guess actively follows the scene of combat sports per se I guess in that context like what kind of I guess got you into combat sports and you know everything like that yeah it's true actually mate um you could ask me like well I'll talk about boxing as such people are saying so and so is fighting tonight or next week or something like that, and I ain't got a clue who people are, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, but um, it, it's not, like, up until recently, I've started following it a bit, especially, like, especially the bare knuckle side, I watched BYB, I watched that the other night, 
Um, I watch every BKB show. I do try and watch every BYB show, but obviously the time difference um, is a bit it's a bit different. Like, but yeah, I really try to stay on top of that um, and see who's doing what and who's at the top level and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, but yeah, but other other times UFC and glove boxing and stuff like that. There's, there's not many really people that I know in them. It's yeah, it's very strange. I've definitely come up from a different scene. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I've talked to certain fighters who don't necessarily like follow it in that kind of capacity. Like it's more of a almost like work kind of thing. But from what you're saying, it seems like you're starting to kind of follow it a bit more. And yeah, I definitely agree with like the different start times and stuff like that. Like it seems like you guys always kind of get shafted with that a little bit like the domestic times we have are like so i mean sometimes they get late but for you guys it's just like encroaching into the next day kind of thing so yeah it is it's i think um it's also about one one a.m it finishes around five a.m so yeah it's a bit early in the next day but i love that you mentioned like watching byb the other night and i guess even as a broader, you know, articulation of that. Like, I love that BYB is doing these crossovers with BKB and stuff like that. And, I mean, your opponent even kind of fits within that, like when he fought on their show against Desmond Green, but just this upcoming event where it's like some of the best guys in BKB and the best guys in BYB fighting. Can you speak to, I guess, that cross-promotion as far as, like, what it does for, I guess, the growth of the sport? And I guess as, like, a Second part of the question, like, is that something you'd be kind of interested in getting into, like some of those crossover bouts? Oh, yeah, most definitely. In that, in that's, that's the best thing about it. It opens windows, don't it? You don't just have to fight in your, in your own country. You can actually go across the seas and fight, fight opponents, so especially like the likes of people from America. They're all tough guys. I mean, you'll have to watch them. And in any sport, they, they're, they are tough. Uh, so... Yeah, it'd, be, it'd definitely be a, an achievement to come over there and fight over there. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely on the cards. So I'm not, I'm not going to lie about that. Yeah, I mean, just like the style you bring to the table, like that Luke Nevin fight was just, you know, an all-time great BKB clash. So to put something like that in the mighty Trigon, which is such like a compact space, I feel like it would, you know, really lend itself well to your kind of style. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm, and I'm quite of a strong lad as well. I mean, I'm only five, five foot six, like, but obviously from, from my bodybuilding days and stuff like that, I've still got all that strength there. So the clinching, I think, could go quite down well with me. Um, and, yeah, speaking of Luke, what a guy he is. Um, he's still to this day going to be the best fighter in my life. Yeah, he's unbelievable, he is. He's turned out a good mate as well. Crazy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely great replay value and something that, you know, any listener should go out of their way to watch if they haven't seen it yet. But I briefly touched on, you know, Scott McHugh in the context of fighting for BYB previously. And I mean, he's got a you know great resume, obviously, entering the ring for his 13th bare knuckle bout and has fought guys like Sean George, James Lilly, Carlos Guerra, multiple time British bare knuckle boxing champion. Like, what are your thoughts on, I guess, some of his more, I guess, noticeable stylistic attributes and, I guess, his resume in Bare Knuckle so far? Uh, well, well, the only thing which sort of was most probably worrying me about the fight was his fitness. I mean, anything else, I've, I've seen his fights and stuff like that. He fights sort of the similar to me with his with his head movement and stuff like that. He's, um, he, get his, he plays with a bit of low, low sense to... Uh, gravity and whatnot so um his style doesn't really bother me that much um and every other fight the, the way i look at it yeah he's fought sean george and uh Guerrero and he's fought Ref, rafael and obviously desmond green but he hasn't fought me yet do you know what i mean and it's like i'll bring a different different thing to that ring it's i won't be fighting at, at any of those five um so yeah, the only thing that was sort of bothering me was his his ring fitness because he's been doing it so long. But I feel that fit now that that's gone out of the window. It don't bother me one bit. I'm ready to go the five rounds rounds with him, and 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 at ease as well. I've got no problems with the round fitness, um, like from like I did at the start of the camp. So yeah, he, he, he's fighting me at the end of the day. He's not fighting them, so I don't really like to look into it as much as that. Obviously, I'll still watch. I still go over his previous fights just to 
get get his styles in me as, as, as such. But again, when once he's fighting me, his style will change a bit. I should imagine anyway. So I, it's it's hard to really go on all that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you've got your own attributes whereby maybe he would approach the fight different than some of those previous opponents. So I definitely get that. Like, I guess, are you thinking that peekaboo style you bring to the table and some of the other attributes like the power and strength, do you feel like that's going to really serve you well in this particular style matchup? It seems to be the case from what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. And not only that, I've also got the speed um, and, and I've also dropped down the weight to be in his, to, to be fighting his trot. And um, and that's not actually been that hard. It's been quite nice dropping the weight. So I'm happy to fight at this weight. I know I'm hopefully I can stay at this weight and fight fight at this weight all the time. Um, yeah, it's made me quicker. The power's still there, but I'm a lot faster with my punches. But uh, a lot faster getting in and out of there. So it's all it's all a bonus. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely very exciting matchup one i was you know stoked to see when the bout announcement came just the experience you guys have and the different like stylistic attributes you bring definitely a great one but something kind of curious to touch on too because i was noticing in one of your bios like you were talking about how much motivation you i guess derive from really like fighting for your family like even beyond the broader scope of nottingham that we were talking about but also more specifically for your wife and your children are your children kind of at an age where they understand what you're getting up to like is it like a my dad can beat up your dad kind of thing oh yeah definitely they're like that <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell any of every other lad that i'll beat up their dad i know that for sure <laughs> 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 but yeah like, like you say mate i don't just fight for myself i fight for and yeah, exactly as it is, everybody in Nottingham, my whole family, and the main reason that I have my wife come out in the corner with me is because I ain't going down in front of her. Like you, you, the way I look at it, is you've really got to punish me to keep me on that floor. And I mean, it hasn't it hadn't happened to this day, but yeah, I just, the way I see it, I just she's there for a purpose. I ain't going down in front of my wife. Do you understand? Yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from, man. And I guess one of the last questions I had here, because it seems like you maybe have a couple of nicknames. Like it seems like the more modern one is the Baron, obviously. But I was seeing Little Biggs was another one out there. Can you give me the backstory on both of those nicknames there? Yeah, I can do. Um, that, that was in my bodybuilding days. The lad who I used to train with, Keith, um, we were just in the gym one day. And obviously because of my eye, um, but I was, I was just dead big, like... I was just short but big, so like little bigs. And I was just training, and he just come out of it one day. He's, he's like, yo, he's little bigs. <laughs> and that was it. It literally just stuck. And the name's been there now for about 15, 15, 16 years. I've had that name for that. So I've just, just kept it on everything. I used it in all my bodybuilding and stuff like that. I quote it to everyone. I've even got it tattooed on me, on me hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's mint. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. So where did, I guess, the Baron kind of come into the picture then? Yeah, the Baron, um, Jim, Jim and Joe gave me that name. Um, and I've, I'm literally, I'm just going to, I'm going to prove prove why I'm the Baron. It's a, what, a, what a nickname they gave me. It's awesome. Love it. Yeah, it blends well with everything for sure. But I appreciate you making all the time to, you know, talk, man. It's a exciting fight for sure. And, you know, glad to have you on and get some insights before it. But just, you know being mindful of that schedule, like I'm saying, is there any maybe final parting thought you might want to add as we're kind of wrapping up here, Aaron? Yeah, just um, all, the, all, the, all the best to Scott and his family and what and whatnot. Um, obviously, there's no there's no grudge between us. We're doing what we're doing on the night, but on a show for the fans. Um, I'm there to take the belt. He's in my way. Um, but yeah, good luck to him. And thanks for everybody to buying tickets and showing the support and all that and thank you Dylan for having me talking to me that in itself yeah whilst I'm getting to talk to you definitely want to get more of these BKB interviews going I just have always loved watching it and I feel like this will fit very nicely into that as you know Aaron McCallum and Scott McHugh vie for that you know British title definitely looks 
good on the poster for sure and very much excited for BKB 32 on May 21st. But until then, yeah, have a good rest of your day there, man. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Dylan, mate. Appreciate it.